The Jack Benny Program, transcribed and presented by Lucky Strike. The cigarette that's toasted to taste better. If you want better taste from your cigarette, Lucky Strike is the brand to get. It's toasted to give you the best taste yet. It's the toasted cigarette. They take fine tobacco, it's light. Tobacco, it's mild. Tobacco, too. And it's toasted, yes, it's toasted. Because the toasting brings the flavor right through. So to get better taste from your cigarette, Lucky Strike is the brand to get. It's toasted to give you the best taste, yet it's the toasted cigarette. This is Don Wilson. You know, that song tells an important story to smokers. Simply, it's this. Lucky's taste better. First, because Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. And then this fine tobacco is toasted. Yes, the fine, mild, good-tasting tobacco in every Lucky is toasted to taste even better. It's toasted. The famous Lucky Strike process brings Lucky's fine tobacco to its very peak of flavor. Tones up this naturally good-tasting tobacco to make it taste even better, cleaner, fresher, smoother. So next time you buy cigarettes, make it a carton of better-tasting Lucky Strike. Be happy. Go lucky. If you want better taste from your cigarette, Lucky Strike is the brand to get. It's toasted to give you the best taste, yet it's the toasted cigarette. The Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Rochester, Dennis Day, Bob Crosby, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight Jack Benny does another of his regular TV shows over the CBS network. But this is the Halloween season, and Halloween is synonymous with fun, whether you live in Beverly Hills, Brooklyn, Sioux City, or Portland. So let's go back to last year, the day after Halloween, and see what went on in the Jack Benny household. Oh, Rochester, has Don Wilson come over yet? Uh, yes, sir. He's waiting for you in the den. Good. No, I also called Dennis and told him to be over. Is he here? No, sir. He phoned and said he'd be a little late. That's funny. Dennis is always on time. I wonder what delayed him. He said that last night was Halloween and some kids took the wheels off his bicycle. <laughs> well, why didn't he take the sunset bus? They took the wheels off of that, too. <laughs> well, that's what Dennis gets for living in that kind of a neighborhood. I'm glad the kids around here aren't that rowdy. Me too, boss. By the way, Rochester, go out and take the bathtub off the front porch and put it back in the house again. <laughs> well, what are you waiting for? Take the bathtub off the front porch. Okay, but there ain't much gas in the car. Gas in the car? What's that got to do with it? The front porch is in Pasadena. <laughs> What? And Pasadena's in Pomona. <laughs> oh. Stop being silly and do what I tell you, will you? Yes, sir. I'm going to the library and talk to Don. Shine on, shine on, harvest moon. Up in the sky. I ain't had... Uh-oh. I better hide those bicycle wheels. Dennis is liable to get sore. <laughs> I'll put them in the closet. I ain't had no loving since January, February, June, or July. La, la, hmm. The other months weren't so good either. <laughs> Oh, well. 
Hi, Don. Hello, Jack. Hello, Jack. Hello, Jack. <laughs> no, no, Polly. Polly, you're supposed to call me Daddy. Oh, wait a minute, Jack. Isn't that a little silly, having a parrot call you Daddy? I don't think so, Don. After all, I take care of her, feed her, talk to her, and I was the one who nursed her when she was sick. Polly was sick? Terribly sick. No, 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 Polly, you're over it now. <laughs> so cute, isn't he? <laughs> or he's so cute, I don't know. <laughs> yes, Don, she was very sick, and... Well, there's the phone, I'll get it. Hello? Hello, Mr. Benny, this is Dennis. Oh, Dennis, we're waiting for you. What's taking you so long? I couldn't get a taxi. Oh. So my mother's driving me over in her steamroller. <laughs> your mother? I thought it was your Uncle Herman that drove the steamroller. Not anymore. Why, what happened? Well, yesterday something was wrong with the front roller, so he got out to take a look at it, and some kids played the meanest Halloween trick. <laughs> Dennis, that's terrible. Where's your uncle now? Well, you know that white line that runs down the middle of Wilshire Boulevard? <laughs> Uh-huh. The dark part of it is Uncle Herman. <laughs> now, Dennis, will you stop making up things like that? Your uncle passed here this morning. Didn't he look thin? <laughs> oh, hang up and get over here, will you? Yes, sir. What a kid. He gets sillier every day. I remember once he called me... <laughs> Don, stop eating Polly's crackers. <laughs> For heaven's sake. I was just picking them up to feed to her. <laughs> Jack, Jack, how long do parrots live? Oh, a long time, Don. Some of them live for years and years. How old is this one? 63. And she's still got all her feathers. That's more than you can say. <laughs> Don, don't be so comical, will you? Be the straight man that you always are, will you please? And <laughs> lately, you always try to be... Rochester, will you answer the phone, please? Yes, sir. Jack Benny's residence, star, stage, screen, radio, television, and we'll sell two bicycle wheels at ridiculously low prices. <laughs> Hello, Rochester, this is Dennis. Please tell Mr. Ben... Hey, what did you say about two bicycle wheels? Uh-oh, me, me better solid. You have long number. Maybe you have better luck by and by. So long, egg for young. Rochester, <laughs> Rochester, I try talking to Rochester, and all the time I talk to Chinese boy. So sorry, no Rochester, nobody here except us chop suey, chop chop. Goodbye, please. Rochester, give me that telephone. Hello, who is this? Oh, hello, Mr. Benny. This is Dennis, and Rochester said you had a pair of bicycle wheels. So that... sorry, long love, love. Goodbye. <laughs> Mr. Benny, Mr. Benny. Dennis, let's stop this kidding. Believe me, kid, if you'd only take my advice and stop talking silly all the time and just sing, you'd really go places. No, I won't. Why not? I've got no wheels on my bicycle. <laughs> oh, goodbye. You know, Don, sometimes I don't know why I waste my time talking to that kid. Oh, Dennis is okay. Oh, speaking of wasting time, Jack, I've been here now nearly a half hour, and you still haven't told me what you wanted me to come over for. Oh, yes, Don, it's about the quartet. The sportsman? Yes. Now, I've been thinking this over seriously for quite a long time now, and I finally made up my mind. I'm going to fire them. Fire them? But, Jack, they're one of the best singing groups in the country. I'll admit that, but they never sing what I want them to. They're always singing crazy songs and embarrassing me. They have no respect for me. The other day when I asked, I practically begged them to do a certain tune. I think the baritone called me a dirty name. You think? Yes. Who knows what hmm, 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 hmm means? <laughs> And anyway, Don, I want you to come with me to a lawyer because you're the one who's responsible for them. Jack, you don't have to go to your lawyer. Yes, I do. I want, them, I want them to break their contract. But you don't have enough reasons to fire them. Yes, I have. But they're wonderful singers, Jack. They're very popular, too, and they have a lot of fans. In fact, plenty of people tune into your program just to hear them, not you. That's another reason. <laughs> 
believe me. Now, look, Jack, don't be hasty. Why don't you give them another chance? Well, I don't like to fire people. In fact, during my entire career in show business, I, I don't think I ever fired anybody. Well, what about that bald-headed writer you used to have? You fired him, didn't you? No, I didn't. I stopped paying him his salary, and after a couple of years, he quit. <laughs> That's all that happened. Well, his partner didn't quit, and he's not with you anymore. Well, he starved to death. <laughs> but, Don, if I give the sportsmen another chance, do you think they'll mend their ways? They'll I'm do sure of it, Jack. Instead of those silly, crazy songs? I, I'm just sure of it, Jack. In fact, I'll talk to them myself. Well, all right. Well, let's forget about it. Jack, you, I'm just as positive as I can be. You won't regret this. Well, I'm going to be running along. Oh, where are you going, Don? Oh, nowhere in particular. I'll probably drop into the drugstore for some lunch. Say, I'm kind of hungry, too. Oh, Rochester! Yes, Mr. Benny? Look, at Mr. Wilson and I are going to have lunch at the drugstore. Come on, Don. Okay, Jack. Well, Jack, here's the drugstore. Yeah, this is a good place to eat. Uh, come on, let's go in. Hmm. All the tables seem to be taken. Let's get those two stools at the end of the counter. But there are two right here, Jack. Oh, yes. I'll see if we can have them. Oh, waitress. Waitress. What do you want, Mac? <laughs> are these two stools available? No, they're reserved for the Duke and Duchess of Windsor. <laughs> Come on, Don. Let's sit down. What do you want to eat? Well, I haven't made up my mind yet. Better take my friend's order first. What do you have, Don? I can't make up my mind either. Miss, maybe, maybe we better look at a menu. Have you got a menu? Here. Now, let me see. Don't bend it. It's the only one we've got. <laughs> look, I'm not... And stop drooling. There's nothing on it that good. <laughs> Look, miss, all I want is a chicken sandwich. I'll have the same. Okay, I'll be back with a grub in a minute. <laughs> you know, Jack, I just can't understand how a girl like her can hold a job here. Now, wait a minute, Don. Don't be too hard on her. You know, she's had a tough time of it. Do you know that she used to be a big star on Broadway? Really? Yep. For three years, she played the title role in The Voice of the Turtle. <laughs> This way her head keeps coming in and out. All the time. <laughs> What'll you have, Mac? You know? <laughs> Say, Don. There. Oh, excuse me a minute, Jack. Excuse me. The sportsmen are sitting over there. The quartet? Where? Yeah, over there in the corner. I want to talk to them a minute. Well, remember, Don, will you give them a warning about what I said? I'll talk to them about it. You do. You drive me nuts. Shine on, shine on, harvest moon up in the sky. Hey, Mac. You want milk to drink with your sandwich, don't you? Yeah, how'd you know? Our coffee would knock you right off that stool. <laughs> All right, all right. Just bring the milk. Yeah. Now, fellas, please, do yourselves a favor. Take my advice. Don't sing that song for Jack. This is neither the time nor the place. Oh, here he comes with that quartet. Now, look, fellas, I'm telling you, for your own good. What's the matter now, Don? They want to sing a new number for you. Here in the drugstore? I should say not. It'll be embarrassing. I told you, fellas. You see, Don, they won't listen to anybody. That's why I want to fire them. But, Jack, they claim that this is a very beautiful song. I don't care how beautiful but Boys, it is. he's mad at you anyway. Now, you better not do a thing. Don, Don, will you boys, keep Boys, hold it, hold it. Don, will hold you keep on singing? Hey, no, 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 if I could take you what does that up mean, in Don? paradise Shaboom. above. Shaboom. Shaboom. If you would tell me I'm the only one that you love, life could be a dream, sweetheart. What happened to Shaboom? Oh, hello again. Shaboom. <laughs> oh, 
life could be a dream. Shaboom. Shaboom. If only all my precious plans would come true. I know what shaboom. Shaboom. If you would let me spend my whole life loving you, life could be a dream. Shaboom. Sweetheart. Sweetheart! <laughs> Don, you got to do something about these guys. <laughs> something is on my mind. If you do what I want you to do, baby, we'll be so fine. I hear the drugstore. Life could be a it's dream so embarrassing. I gotta find if I could take you up to paradise of above. Shaboom. If you would tell me I'm the only one you love. Life could be a dream, sweetheart, sweetheart. Shaboom, da boom, da boom, da boom, shaboom, sweetheart. Shaboom, the only thing I understand is sweetheart now. <laughs> Fellas, everybody's looking at us in the drugstore. Fellas, we're in the drug. Don, I told you. Fellas, we're in the drugstore. People are not eating. Wait a minute. Boys, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. That does it, Don. That's the last straw. I warned you that if they drag I tried to Shaboom! I, what? <laughs> no, I was a nice guy. I gave them another chance. Jack, now, if you'd all... I don't want to hear any more about it. Now, I'm going to call a lawyer right now. We'll go over there and see if I can break my contract with that quartet. Now, come on, Don. Shaboom! Is this the lawyer's office, Jack? Yeah, Joseph S. Kearns, attorney at law. Let's go in. Pardon me, miss. I'd like to see Mr. Kearns. Do you have an appointment? <laughs> I was better off with Shaboom. <laughs> Well, I... What? What did you say? Do you have an appointment? Yes, I have an appointment. What? I said I have an appointment. What? An appointment. Oh, go right in. <laughs> Shaboom. Now, look, Mr. Smith, I'm a busy man. I can't stay on this phone all day. I told you I won't settle this case for less than $50,000. I'm sorry, Mr. Smith. Well, that's up to you, Mr. Smith. Goodbye. Oh, hello, Mr. Kearns. How do you do, Mr. Smith? No. <laughs> no, Benny. The name is Jack Benny. Ah, oh, yes, yes, please forgive me. It's just that I've been so busy lately and have so many things on my mind. Oh, I understand, Mr. Kearns. I'd like you to meet Don Wilson. Ah, uh, how do you do, Mr. Wilson? How do you do? Uh, haven't we met before? I don't think so. That's funny. Your name is so familiar... Keeps running through my mind. Smith, Smith, Smith. <laughs> no, no, his name is Wilson. Oh, yes, yes, how stupid of me. Your name is Smith. <laughs> no, look, Smith was on the telephone, is it? What happened to Benny? <laughs> no, Shaboom wasn't bad. <laughs> Look, I'm Benny. It's my Jack Benny. Oh, yes. Now, uh, what can I do for you? Well, Mr. Kearns, what I came to see you about... Oh, uh, pardon me. Yeah. Yeah? Oh, oh, well, send them right in. This won't take long. It seems to be very urgent. A domestic case. Uh, come in. Mr. Kearns, I want... I'll do the talking and you keep your big mouth shut. <laughs> my big mouth? Your lips could be stretched over a piano stool. <laughs> now, now, we can settle this without harsh words. That's okay with me. I want to divorce this jerk. Very well, but you'll need grounds. 
If I had that, I'd bury him. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Please, please, let's not resort to that. Uh, what are your names again? Mr. and Mrs. Mrs. Krausmeyer. Very well, I'll file the application. Goodbye. Now, getting back to you, what did you come to see me about? Well, you see... Oh, wait a minute, Don, Don, I'll tell him. Mr. Kearns, I started to say... Oh, yes, I remember. You two wanted a divorce. <laughs> No, no, that's Krausmeyer. Oh, of course, of course. I had you confused with Mr. and Mrs. Wilson, who just left. But I'm Mr. Wilson. Oh, yes, yes, then you're Mr. Krausmeyer. No, no, I'm Smith. I mean, Benny. <laughs> I'm Benny. Oh, yes, Benny Wilson. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> now, uh, what's on your mind? Well, I've got a quartet on my radio program, and I'd like to break their contract. Now, here it is. Will you just look over? Hmm. Yeah. Yes, it looks like an ironclad agreement. But I... Oh, excuse me. Yes? Huh? Oh, good, good. Send them in. It's that couple who were just in here for a divorce, Mr. and Mrs. Kearns. No, your name is Kearns. Uh, I mean Mr. and Mrs. Wilson. Their name is Krausmeyer. Oh, yes. Thank you, Mr. Smith. <laughs> Jack, Jack, isn't this the lawyer who pleaded uh, the case and got the jury so confused that they sent the judge up for 20 years? <laughs> oh, so you read about it, huh? <laughs> read about it? I thought he made up a joke. <laughs> for heaven's sakes. Come in. Come, doll face, carry me over the threshold. <laughs> no, lover, you carry me. You're stronger. <laughs> okay. Oops, a daisy. Oops, not so high, I'll get a nosebleed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come, come, I'm a busy man. Are you sure your minds are made up? Yeah, me and Porfirio don't want a divorce. <laughs> Should we go back to Shaboom and start over again? <laughs> Somebody has a line in here somewhere. <laughs> fine, fine. <laughs> fine, fine. I won't file the application. And good luck to both of you. Thank, Thank you. you. Now, where were we? Now, please. Well, please, let's not... Let's not waste... Let's not waste any more time. Benny is the name. Jack Benny. This is Mr. Wilson. Mr. and Mrs. Krausmeyer just left. You're Kearns, and Smith was on the phone. Now, tell me, Mr. Kearns, you said you knew how to break the contract with my quartet. Now, how are you going to do it? Uh, now, let's see. Since you're suing them for $50,000... We can... I'm not suing them for $50,000. Oh, yes, that was Krausmeyer. Well, oh, that was Smith on the phone. Well, what are you doing here? I don't, all I know is I had an appointment. Yes, you came in here about a quartet, I remember now. You came in with this man here, Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. Uh... Eagle Bottom. <laughs> Don. <laughs> now, Mr. Kearns, about my quartet. Mr. Kearns, about my quartet, you've got to break that contract. Now, here it is on your desk. Oh, that one... I'm sorry, but that contract is unbreakable. You haven't got a chance. So I advise you as a lawyer... Oh, now what? Come in. I'm going to divorce you if it's the last thing I do, you spongehead. That's gratitude for you. After we left here, I carried you all the way down the hall so you wouldn't tire your big, flat feet. 
Well, you didn't have to drop me down that laundry chute. <laughs> Look, I don't mean to get into this, but we're on the 12th floor, and you dropped your wife down the laundry chute? I hit bottom like a sack of wet wash. <laughs> well, with your shape, how else could you hit? <laughs> Mr. Kern? I've got the applications right here. Good. We'll see you in court. Goodbye. Gee, that's a shame. They're such a nice couple. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't worry about them. This has been going on for 20 years. They'll get back together. But I am worried about the children. You mean they've been fighting for 20 years? Oh, yes. They have children? That's the tragedy of divorce. Who's going to take care of the little ones? Hmm. And I think I have trouble. Mr. Kearns, I'm glad I dropped into your office today. I got a big home, a butler, a swimming pool. And I'm going to do something that'll make me happy, too. I'm going to have their children come home and live with me until their parents make up their minds. Gosh, that's the noblest thing you've ever done, Mr. Krausmeyer. <laughs> yes, it's a wonderful thing. And from now on, the children are your responsibility. Well, good, good. And the children are here, right in the next office. May I see the little rascals now? Well, you certainly may. Go right in. Thank you. You? You're the children? Shaboom, shaboom. Shaboom, shaboom. Oh, for heaven's sakes. Come on, Don. Let's go. Mr. B. Shaboom. Jack will be back in a minute to tell you about his television program, which goes on immediately after this show. But first, I'd like to say something important to you cigarette smokers. When you light up a Lucky, you can be sure you'll get the better taste you want. That's because a Lucky is toasted to taste better. Of course, the beginning of better taste is fine tobacco. L.S. M.F.T., Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. And then it's toasted. That's the famous Lucky Strike process that brings Lucky's fine tobacco to its peak of flavor. Tones it up to make this naturally good-tasting tobacco taste even better, cleaner, fresher, smoother. Yes, that's why Lucky's taste better. It's the cigarette of fine tobacco, and it's toasted. So remember... If you want better taste from your cigarette... Lucky Strike is the brand to get. It's toasted to give you the best taste yet. It's the toasted cigarette. They take fine tobacco, it's light. Tobacco, it's mild. Tobacco, too. And it's toasted, yes, it's toasted. Because the toasting brings the flavor right through. So to get better taste from your cigarette, Lucky Strike is the brand to get. It's toasted to give you the best taste, yet it's the toasted cigarette. Ladies and gentlemen, I was going to tell you about my television show, but we're a little late, so tune in and watch it. Good night, folks. The Jack Benny Show tonight was written by Milt Josephsberg, John Tackerberry, Hal Goldman, Al Gordon, and produced and transcribed by Hilliard Marks. The Jack Benny Program is brought to you by Lucky Strike, product of the American Tobacco Company, America's leading manufacturer of cigarettes. <laughs>